Hey guys, today is Sunday, January the 28th of 2024. I wanted to do a little geometry on natural gas and show some things I missed on my uh, video I posted yesterday. So if I'm for a delay, let's get into it. As you can see, using our pitchfork, and I'm using the uh, 144 low to that uh, 1002 high. You can see that we're below the angle, so kind of on the weaker side, and that's obvious. On the GAN square, you can see that this vector point, which I call, uh, is that one six. You can see that we got this nice pop. So now we're heading up. So resistance using the GAN square will be 284. Support will be 251. If we zoom in here a little bit, you can see what that looks like. It came down at the one six on the GAN square, it got this nice pop. Now, is it going to continue? That remains to be seen, but you know these two levels right here. As long as it can stay above this angle and maybe get above this angle and then in between this square, it'll start getting uh, better. Start tracting, uh, you know, going higher, making higher highs and higher lows. So let's see. Let's get out of there. This is now scoring the range from the current where we're at right now, from that 1002 to that uh, 9, uh, I don't know, 994, 194. You can see that we're now smack in the middle. And there's the level there, resistance of 295. You want to keep an eye on. Uh, we get to get up there this week. The GAN fins, you can see that we are above now the 1 eighth. This is the 1 fourth, uh, 1 3, 1 2, uh, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4. We're now above the 1 by 8. This is like the last leg from the uh, 145, 45 degree scale chart. And I went ahead and put one from the top and we're chopping around the uh, one by two right here. Ways to go. Uh, doing the ellipse, there's nothing really there. I added this ellipse from the top to the bottom and we, you know, I think I've had it, but maybe I must've deleted it. We're, we're struggling to get back into the ellipse. So this is like a battle zone right here. So far we're in, as long as we can stay above there and follow this arc, uh, maybe we can start trending higher. I think that's it. We'll go now to the other clip where it's a closer range from the 1002 to the uh, 194 low. Okay, so this is the uh, more of a fractal from the uh, high of that 1002 to this low of 194. Using the GAN square, it's interesting. From this 1002 to that low, you can see that we bounced right off the vector point, which is the 16, and we're above this angle. So, if this is going to continue and the GAN square is working, you want to um, keep an eye on this level 295, which I think I mentioned it in the last clip. 295, keep an eye on that. That's going to be a little headwind there. As long as we can stay above this angle, it could trend higher. Advanced uh, support and resistance, the 240 has been working. It's, it's it dipped in here, but it's holding well. Uh, level you want to watch is that 294, which kind of makes sense, 294, 295 with the GAN square. So keep an eye on that. If we're going to grind and, you know, grind higher. Uh, you can see that right now from this swing point, uh, that 273 could be an issue. Here we at 271. So let's see if that's going to hold or stall or we fail here. The ellipse, um, you can see that that's the 25th. That's a Thursday and then the right there. And the ellipse from the low to this high. Uh, we got 215 coming up when you put them together and you get the, uh, that crossover right there that pretty much nailed that, uh, turning point on the low right here. Boom. So that was an energy point. These are the kind of things that Gan would trade, um, that I learned in his courses and MSJ. I learned a lot with MSJ in his, uh, and his teachings and, and his things that he's put out, you know, uh, on the internet and his website. So that pretty much, you know, it, it's a hit or miss. It's either going to happen or not happen, but you're picking, you know, 
cause and effect points, you know, in geometry that could uh, create some kind of, you know, volatility, either to the upside, to the downside, or sometimes it could be a dud. In this case, this one worked out great. Got this nice little pop right here. Boom. And, you know, factor that in with the uh, square, GAN square and all that, and you build like a nice little cluster. You're going to be like, all right, you know what? There's a high probability something's going to happen somewhere around here. And boom. That's what happened right there. Let's get that out. And then lastly, pitchfork. We found support at that angle. And we got the uh, 25 right here. That's the 50. So let's see if we could get across this because we failed it here. I think that's 100 from here. I can't remember if it's 100 or 125. I need to look at the indicator. And then I went ahead and did the uh, Andrews pitchfork from here. And you can see that uh, it found support at the 50. So uh, I want to see if, if it's going to continue going higher. Can it deal with this angle and close above here? So you got first this angle. You got to fight and get above. And then you got to get above that pivot high. And once you get above that pivot high, then that will be your next high. That's that 364. And that's, I can't remember what price is that. 281? Off the top of my head, I can't remember. But anyway, that's, that's what happened there. Um, I think that's it for here. So I wanted to show you another thing here. Two more things and we're done. So this is my natural gas forecast for the next three months. As you can see, these are the bullish projection line cycles, things that are, you know, uh, predicting the future, you know, using probability, not that it's, you know, written in stone, only God could do that. And sometimes we could get away with some things and get, you know, get some hits, but this is the bullish, uh, things that I have in regards to, uh, you know, cycles and these peak around 325. So this is bullish. This means it's going up to March. And this one just peaked in January right here. So let's get this here. Uh, this is the dominant cycle, five years, 76. And that one just peaked on January the 28th, which is today. And these are future. So this is assuming that prices are going to go higher and, and it's going to go, you know, continue grinding higher to around these dates. Now, when you go, when you go to the bearish camp, look at all the stuff that I have bearish. So someone, you know, could ask me, well, you know, if you're trading in a hedge fund or whatever, and your boss comes in and is like, all right, Ziggy, what, what, what are you going to do in that gas? What are we doing? We're going long, you know, now we're going short. And I've been thinking about this and I said, you know what? I need to make something where I could decide where the probabilities, where there's a way more. And looking at this side, things look a little more weaker. And don't worry about weight. This is not kind of like the uh, typical weight. I'm just using it as counting. It's like a, more like a counter. And you can see seasonality. February and March are weak. We got one there. The two mirror cycle just uh, hit a peak on the 26th. So and they're pointing down. The delta, you know, four month. Uh, and this is an experiment. I really don't, I've never, I don't know. I don't think I've ever used it. I've had it there, but I'm, I'm testing it out at a peak on, on the 26. The dominant cycle five year, which is a 256 cycle uh, phase, uh, top departure. Um, trough will be hitting on February the 16th. So this is down. The Dewey cycle just uh, is going to peak in February the uh, 1st. So this should probably be on this side, but it's going to be eventually turning down. So I just kind of put it here because um, we'll, we'll have a couple of more days and then it turns down. So, you know, maybe technically this should have been over here because uh, the peak is on February the 1st. So maybe it's 10. Uh, this uh, dominant cycle five year, 200, did I do that one, 256 and the 76 composite. So these are two cycles together. Uh, it takes you to a trough, a cycle low to March 3rd. So this one is bearish. These are two cycles composite together. So this one is bearish. Is it, it bottoms out. It's a trough around March 3rd. Neural net, which is now nothing with cycles and seasonality. It's the computer figuring it out. 
uh, with its own black box, you know, technique. Uh, it's uh, forecasting uh, February the 19th for, you know, for a low, swing low, you know, or a turning point. That's bearish. Annual cycle trough. Uh, that's the annual cycle picks a low on February the 9th. Uh, these are, I call them PC, but these are planetary cycles. This one hits a low on March the 27th. One of them. I got two that are positive. And then the uh, spectrum analyzer uh, that's not this spectrum analyzer. Uh, using a, more like an indicator of a relative price oscillator. is is a different kind of, you could probably say like an alg algorithm or setting. Is picking February, March for lows. And if you do a composite of the uh, two uh, spectrum uh, cycle analyzers that I use here, it's somewhere in between, you know, I think maybe March uh, or maybe late February where the composite bottoms out and then it turns up. So if you want to put that one there, you really have 10 to the downside telling you, you know, a lot of stuff is more bearish and you probably have uh, four here. Uh, adding this one because this one peaks on February 1th. So then you're like, all right, you know, what are the probabilities, you know, using all these clusters and everything that this is probably going to play out? It's still, you know, it's still it's a probability. You just don't know because, you know, you could have a black swan event. We're not even considering the weather here. We're not considering something, you know, going on in the Middle East. We're not considering the unknown, which is the curveball, you know, the weather, which could be a curveball. Something that could just get natural gas all out of whack. You just never know. And that's something that you just don't factor in. And that's why they call it the black swan event, because you just don't know. It's something that just came and just, just changed everything. And then all of this is out the window. Because the black swan or the event or whatever, the weather or whatever just happened uh, has changed everything. And everything now is going to a different rhythm. So I just wanted to put that out there for you guys to kind of kind of see. So if I was to uh, make a choice this week or in the next coming uh, days or weeks, I would be leaning on this side just because uh, uh, the evidence is a little more overwhelming. But is it guaranteed now? It's just probability that this might play out. Uh, the curveball is, is that maybe these GAN theories, uh, which is planetary cycles, are, are pretty the ones that are going to work out and we get a surprise move to the upside. Um, and you know, throws a curveball on all of this, and then we'll be like, "Wow, look at that! The planetary cycle has really worked out." They're just continue grinding higher, and for whatever reason, that could be the weather, it could be whatever it is that's pushing natural gas higher. So we'll see uh, between these two camps, which is the ones that's going to win. And then lastly, I wanted to show the uh, statistical calendar because I didn't fill it out. But I kind of verbally said it. So uh, trading day, bullish Monday, Tuesday bearish, uh, Wednesday bearish, Thursday bearish, and Friday bullish. Weekday, you know what that means. All the Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays. Uh, normally Monday is a little more bullish. When, uh, Tuesday is uh, bearish, 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 bearish. So between the uh, month of February, uh, Tuesdays are weak and Fridays are weak. Uh, you make some money here on Monday. Uh, it just go down. You'll, you'll make some money here. You can see this is the $2 sign. Wednesday, you'll make some money here. Thursday, you'll make the most money. Because Thursday is a, is a big down day. Like a big down day. For whatever reason, February 1st. So I don't know what that means. You remember seasonality, uh, uh, that, that, that 30th, 31, 20, you know, February 1st, 2nd, it just starts going down on the seasonality chart. Statistically, this is confirming it here on this day. And then for some odd reason, which I don't understand, Friday, uh, you, you make some money to the upside. It's a bullish day. So I don't know if it's just because it tanked so hard, and then Friday they just bought it up. I don't know, but that's what this, that's what the data is showing. Average return by week uh, is uh, negative and average return by month is negative. And don't mind the, the times. These are just because of the calendar um, on the computer. 
this is nothing about, you know, start scoring short or long in these times. These are just, just times that I have in there. I have no way to get them off. So they just kind of, you know, generically show up. Well, that's it for me. I'm going to sign out. Hopefully you like this uh, update on geometry, you know, statistics and on my uh, bullish versus bearish net gas forecast for the next three months. Let's see what's going to play out. And I'll uh, keep you posted on my thoughts on natural gas.